am Professor Isam Akram Hussain, Professor of Anatomy and Head of the Department, North Bengal Medical College, Shirazpur, Bangladesh. I am just going to demonstrate the projected part of the superior extremity, beginning from scapular region up to the dorsum of the hand. I think this demonstration and identification of the different portions of this posterior aspect of the superior extremity will be helpful for the practical knowledge of the students in first year and second year of the MBBS curriculum and they will utilize this practical demonstration for their subsequent learning activities. I wish for the better understanding of these parts of the Supri activity. Thanks. Yes. Just I am going to start. Uh, back, this is the scapular region. This is the scapular region. Or you can, another you can say, vertebral scapular region. And this is the back portions of the trunk behind the abdomen. And if you identify the structures, those, especially the muscles, that will attach from scapula and vertebral column, vertebral scapular muscles. If I identify individually, what are the muscles that will attach to the vertebral column and scapula? From above, a triangular muscle, you see, this is the triangular muscle. This is the triangular muscle very important muscles and this is the trapezius muscles. It is attached in the medial plane in the vertebral column, back the spines of the vertebral column in the thoracic region and cervical region and spine, this is the spine of the scapula, superior and inferior border and this is the triangular in shape. If I cut by longitudinal incision from this detached from the vertebra, then I can we can easily separate this one from its attachment from the median plane, and also it will reflect it laterally. Then we can expose so many other muscles underneath this trapezius muscle. This is trapezius as a whole. This is the trapezius. And this trapezius muscle triangular each side, right and left side same. And this trapezius muscle is supplied by spinal root of the accessory nerve, the motor supply, and sensory supply, third and fourth. This is the vehicle. Spinal nerve, third and fourth. This is the proprioceptive supply, sensory supply. If we reflect this one laterally, underneath this other vertebroscapular muscle above, below, this is the liver proscapuli. This one liver proscapuli muscle. It will attach to the, this is the medial border of the dorsal aspect of the medial border of the scapula, just opposite the angle, superior angle, this is the liver proscapuli. Then, Rhombodius major muscle and rhombodius minor muscle. So these three muscles attach to this dorsal aspect of the medial border of the scapula. Yeah. So you can easily understand again. If you cover this one, then it will go underneath. And so these are the vertebral scapular muscle. Trapezius, superficial, deep levator scapula. Rhombodius major and rhombodius minor. And if you see now, after placing this trapezius again in this position, then if you reflect from upper fibers, this uh, this muscle is the just above the, this is the spine of the scapula, and under cover this trapezius, if you reflect this one, this is supraspinatus muscle. Supraspinatus muscle. Supraspinous fossa gives sides for origin. 
supraspinatus and if you again place in this position then replace this posterior fiber of the deltoid then infraspinatus muscle infraspinatus muscle the infraspinatus muscle yeah and this is the posterior fiber of the deltoid that is act this is the from the posterior inferior border of the spine of this scapula this posterior fiber this is acromial fiber this is acro from acromion process of the acromion fiber of the deltoid and really this is the clavicular fiber collectively this muscle it will converse and originate from here three sides and converse during insertion to the this is the shaft of the lateral aspect of the shaft of the humerus this is very robust muscles in the shoulder and it will create it will create the prominence of the shoulder very important and this is the robust muscles of the shoulder region this is the deltoid muscle and this deltoid muscle this middle fiber the acromial fiber this is a by this multipedal muscle multipedal origin and anterior and posterior fiber and this whole muscle is supplied by axillary nerve from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and it involves for the function of the shoulder joint especially the acromial fiber from the abduction from 15 degree to 90 degree anterior fiber for flexion and medial rotation and posterior fiber for extension and lateral rotation so this is very important muscle it is it has clinical reports we do usually use this muscle for intermuscular injection so this is our deltoid muscle if a posterior fiber of the deltoid cut from its origin then we can identify other muscles in this humeroscapular muscle scapula and humerus among those if we identify those muscles this is the teres minor muscle teres minor teres minor muscle very important muscle this one teres minor muscle this is teres minor and this is the teres major muscle teres minor under cover of the posterior fiber of the deltoid this is the posterior fiber if you replace this one then teres minor and it is attached to this humerus get a tubercle humerus posteriorly and it is supplied by the posterior fiber of the axillary nerve and this axillary nerve we identify later on and this is teres minor and this is the teres major muscle this one teres major muscle can you easily understand this one this is teres major muscle this one this one teres major muscle and it takes origin from lower part of the dorsal aspect of the lateral border of the scapula from above teres minor from below teres major and teres major again it will go to the humerus at us to the humerus in between teres minor and teres major another muscle this one this is the long head of the triceps brachii muscle long head of the triceps brachii muscle very clear long head of the triceps brachii muscle this is the long head and this is the lateral head of the triceps brachii a long head come from infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and lateral head come from humerus posterior surface of the upper part of the humerus just above the radial groove rather just above the radial groove this one this lateral head this two head and underneath this lateral head below the radial groove this is the medial head medial head so again this is the long head from infraglenoid tubercle lateral head head from the posterior surface of the humerus above the radial groove origin 
and medial head from posterior surface of the humerus, posterolateral and posterior medial, actually posterior surface below the radial groove takes origin. This three head unite, long head, lateral head and medial head and unite and it will form the common tendon. This is, this is tricep, tricep brachii muscle, aponeurosis, aponeurosis it will be a flat tendon. Ultimately, it will attach to this posterior part of the superior surface of the olecranon process of ulna. Clear? Long, lateral, and medial. We had unite single muscle, aponeurotic insertion, posterior part of the superior surface of olecranon process of ulna. This is single muscle in the posterior surface or back of the arm. Now, if you consider what structures that will be covered by this lateral head. Under cover of the lateral head, if I do one transverse incision, give transverse incision, then to reflect like this, but it is not here, that is, we can easily identify this one. This is the radial group. This is the radial group or, or spiral group. It contains, this is the radial arm. This is the very important nerve that will come from posterior cord of brachial plexus along with arteria profunda brachii, arteria profunda brachii with vena committens, arteria profunda brachii and vena committens. Collectively, it remains in the spiral groove, the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus, very important site. Yeah. And this is uh, actually, if any fracture over here, then this nerve will injure. And that may cause so many clinical conditions later on. And this is the deep artery, this artery profound brachii that will come from brachial artery, along with this radial nerve. So contains of this radial groups two, this is the radial nerve and artery profound brachii with beta committance. And it will remain under cover of lateral head like this. And this is the long head. And underneath the lateral head is the medial head. Collectively, it will form this common tendon that takes insertion towards the olecranon process of ulna. And this three head is supplied by this nerve, radial nerve, from posterior cord of the brachial plexus. Clear? Now, if I go again, this portion. Here are two spaces, two spaces very important. One is quadrangular space, quadrangular space. This is quadrangular space, and this is the triangular space. This is triangular space, triangular. I will demonstrate the boundaries. This is the quadrangular space. First of all, quadrangular space. Quadrangular space, if you consider the quadrangular space, this is the four boundary. Four. If you consider this one, four boundaries. Above this one, above this is the teres minor. Above this is the teres minor. Teres minor. Above. Below this is the teres major. You see, this is the teres major. This upper border of the teres major. If you consider this one, this is very clear. This is. This is the teres major, teres major, you see, this is the upper part of the teres major and this is the teres minor, above teres minor, below upper part of the teres major and later, medially, this is the long head of the triceps and medially, laterally by the surgical neck of the humerus, so quadrangular space. Again, I am repeating, above by the teres minor, below teres major, medially long head of the triceps, laterally surgical, surgical neck of the humerus. This is quadrangular space. And this quadrangular space contains very important structure. This is the axillary nerve. This is axillary nerve, very important come from posterior cord of the brachial plexus, axillary nerve. 
there and posterior circumflex humeral vessel very important along with posterior circumflex humeral vessel this is very clear so better to um, identify that this posterior circumflex humeral vessel this is and this is the axillary now Posterior circumflex humeral vessels. And posterior circumflex humeral vessels that will come from axillary, third part of the axillary artery. Third part of the axillary artery. And this is the very important site of the surgical neck of the humerus related to these structures. And any critical condition that causes factors of this region that can injure, this is the axillary arm. Then this group of muscles will affect lateral muscle, there is minor muscle, this muscle can affect. This is the triangular, quadrangular space. Now, triangular space, triangular space, you see, this is the teres minor, this one teres minor, you see, this is the space, this is teres minor above, teres major below, and this is the meeting point, this is triangle, this is it is minor at this major, this is the meeting point, angle, and later is this is the long head of the triceps. So it is a triangular space. This is a laterally, this is superiorly it is minor, inferiorly it is major, and this is apex. And this space, triangular space, contains circumflex scapular vessels. Circumflex scapular vessels. And that is the vessel that is very important for anastomosis around the scapula. Clear? Now, if you again cover this part, from back, very important muscle come from below, up, and that will cover the inferior angle of the scapula. Sometimes attached, sometimes it will just cover, just like covering. And from iliac crest, it comes up. This is the fiber, direction of the fibers come up, upwards and lateral. And this is the latissimus dorsi muscle. Latissimus dorsi muscle. And it will cover the inferior angle of the scapula. Then go along with this major, it will go to the humerus. And it will attach to the Floor of the bicipital groove. Floor of the bicipital groove. It is major attached to lateral border of the bicipital grooves, and it will go to the floor of the bicipital groove. Lateral border of the bicipital groove gives sides for the attachment of the pectoralis major. We have already discussed this latissimus dorsi muscle and teres major. These two. You will form the posterior axillary fold. Posterior axillary fold. And this is mus this muscle is supplied by thoracodorsal nerve. That is one dorsi is supplied by thoracodorsal nerve. And that now come from posterior cord of the brachial plexus. And this is major supplied lower subscapular nerve. It is also come from posterior cord of the brachial plexus. Clear? So now you can easily understand these are the muscles from humeroscapular muscle. This is again, this is the deltoid, this is the long head of the triceps, this is the teres minor, this is teres major, and these are the muscles supraspinatus, infraspinatus. And supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles supply suprascapular now. All go to the humerus. So these are the humeroscapular muscles. And this muscle come from trunk, back of the trunk, go to this humerus. This is the from lower, this is the high spine iliac crest. And this is very important muscles, helpful for climbing purpose, climbing. So this is about this 
vertebral scapular region and back of the arm we have already discussed only one muscle deltoid we have already mentioned and its function and arm supply and attachment now go back go come now in the back of the elbow in the back of the elbow you can easily understand this only one muscle with three head come I have already mentioned and this is the actually tricep back eye muscle triceps back eye muscle aponeurotic insertion is the olecranon this is the olecranon process of anula superior surface posterior part of the superior surface it gives sides for that is aponeurotic insertion and is supplied by the radial nerve I have already mentioned and this muscle acts over this elbow joint from behind and this is the antagonist muscle to the opposite muscle just brachialis muscle muscles of the front of the elbow brachialis do flexion and it will do extension so antagonist action just opposite the brachialis muscle this is the elbow x over the elbow joint and another muscle here this is the ankylosis muscle this is the muscles of the back of the forearm so only single muscles single muscles single nerve and arteries now come back come down back of the forearm back of the forearm extends from back of the elbow up to the back of the wrist back of the forearm and back of the forearm contains 12 muscles superficial 7 and deep 5 12 muscles and this bone this is the bone ulna it is subcutaneous especially the posterior border and olecranon process subcutaneous subcutaneous underneath the skin this posterior border very underneath the skin subcutaneous and olecranon process it is also subcutaneous just behind the elbow this is the subcutaneous if I try to identify the muscles groups of muscles superficial groups seven muscles and superficial seven muscles if we I identify from lateral to medial lateral to medial this is the you can easily understand from lateral to medial very easy most laterally this is the brachioradialis most uh, laterally this is the brachioradialis muscle the extensor carpi the radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis again I repeat three muscles very important better to uh, keep this one and identify this one this is brachioradialis brachioradialis this is muscle brachioradialis then extensor carpi radialis longus this one extensor carpi radialis longus better can you understand this is the this is brachioradialis this is extensor carpi, carpi radialis longus this one extensor carpi radialis longus then extensor carpi radialis brevis three muscle clear brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus then extensor carpi radialis brevis these three then extensor digitorum this is extensor digitorum very clear muscle extensor digitorum very clear extensor digitorum clear and extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi and then extensor carpi ulnaris extensor carpi ulnaris so extensor digiti minimi then extensor carpi ulnaris 
and this is the enconius. Enconius. Again, I am repeating. For your better understanding, again, I am repeating from lateral to medial again. First of all, backward arteries. Yes, backward arteries. Backward arteries. This one, backward arteries. Very top. Yes, backward arteries. External carpid arteries longus. External carpid arteries brevis. This three. Backward arteries. External carpid arteries longus. And external carpid arteries brevis. Three. Extensor digitorum four. Extensor digiti mini five. Extensor carpi annaris six. And enconius seven. Clear? This seven mass. Now go to deep. Deep one. Deep one. This is the very important. This Abductor policies longus. Abductor policies longus. Very important. Extensor policies brevis. This one. Extensor policies brevis. Abductor policies longus and extensor policies. This is extensor policies brevis. Then extensor policies longus. Three. And here, one muscle identified just below this one, very important. This extensor indices, extensor indices, this one, extensor indices, very important. Extensor indices, this is extensor policies longus, and this is extensor indices. Abductor policies longus, extensor policies brevis, extensor policies longus, extensor indices, and if you consider this here, very important, another one, this is the supinator muscle. This one supinator. Supinator muscle. So deep muscle, five, one. Abductor policies longus, one. Extensor policies babies. Abductor policies long, extensor policies baby, extensor policy longus, extensor indices, this one, extensor indices, and supinator. This one supinator muscle. Supinator muscle. And these twelve muscle are supplied by single nerve. This is the radial nerve. This supply comes directly from trunk of the radial nerve from front and one deep muscular branch that will supply most of the muscles and that nerve present remains in this area very tapped of fibers that will come through the fibers of this supinator Fibers as supinator muscle is the spiral muscle through the fibers of the supinator that will come and that will supply these groups of muscle. This is the very important. This is the posterior interosseous nerve. Posterior interosseous nerve. This is now posterior interosseous nerve. This is very important. Posterior interosseous nerve. Bundle of fibers that will come deep muscular branch of this radial nerve, the posterior interosseous, it will come through the fibers of the supinator. Uh, and some fibers come directly, as for example, vacuo radialis, extensor vacuo radialis, extensor carpid radialis longus, extensor carpid radialis brevis, all come directly from the radial nerve. Other come from posterior interosseous branch of the radial nerve. And these are the extra muscles of the extensor group of the back of the 
forearm is the muscles of the extensor group, back of the arm also muscles of the extensor group. But in opposite group, front of the forearm is the flexor group, front of the arm also flexor group. This is a variation in between superior and inflexibility. In inflexibility, front muscles, front of the thigh and front of the leg, this is the extensor muscle. But in the superior extremity, front of the arm and front of the forearms are the flexor muscles. In inflexibility, back of the thigh and back of the leg is a flexor group muscle. But here, back of the arm and back of the forearm, the extensor group of muscle. This variation developmentally due to the reverse rotation of the superior and inflexed extremity, 90 degree reverse rotation. And in superior extremity, 90 degree lateral rotation and in phase with the 90 degree medial rotation. This is in developmental background. Now come now in the dorsum of the hand. These are the tendon come, all tendon come in the dorsum of the hand. If you consider this is the dorsum of the hand, this is the tendon, all tendon come over here. Through this here, deep fascia of the forearm, this is the anti-brachial fascia that will thicken over here, thicken over here, just like this, and it will form the extensor retina column. That will hold up this tendon in this region, back of the wrist, and through different tunnels, this tendon will come down over the dorsal of the hand, and proper actioning, it will hold up this tendon. Flexor, this is extensor retina column, just reverse in the front, flexor retina column. And this is a flexor, the extensor distal tendons, and this is the extensor pollicis longus, and this is the extensor indices, and this is extensor pollicis longus, all remains underneath this extensor retina column. And it will come and draws out the hand, and after coming here, in the just opposite the metacarpophalangeal joint, it will expand, it will form the dorsal digital expansion. Dorsal digital expansion, and this dorsal digital expansion will give site for the attachment of this opposite group of short muscles of the palm of the hand. Dors this is the lumbricals, permanent dorsi, and in this dorsal aspect, this, the, this are the muscle, dorsal interossi muscle. These are the dorsal interossi muscle. Dorsal interossi muscle. These are the dorsal interossi muscle. These are the bipedal muscle. And this attached to the dorsal digital expansion. And from palmar aspect, it will, this is the lumbricals and palmar interossi muscle attached. Through this dorsal digital expansion, this muscle dorsal and palmar interossi and lumbricals acts over this metacarpophalangeal joint and interphalangeal joint. This is the interphalangeal joint. And this tendon acts for the extension of the interphalangeal joint. And through the dorsal digital expansion, this is acts over this metacarpophalangeal joint for flexion and extension. This is extension and flexion. Flexor tendon do flexion and extensor tendon do extension. But lumbricals and dorsal and palmar interossi that will do palmar interossi from palmar aspect it will adapt, adapt this metacorphalangeal towards this midline, this is the midline axis, towards the midline, adapt and dorsal interossi it will abduct from the midline, abduct. Clear? But lumbricus muscle from palmar aspect, through this dorsal digital expansion, it will flex the metacarpophalangeal joint but extend the interphalangeal joint. So, this is very important for the actions of these short muscles of the palm of the hand and dorsum of the hand for their actions about the metacarpophalangeal joint, interphalangeal joint. And this dorsal interossi muscle, palmar interossi muscle, and lumbricals, all muscles supplied by ulnar nerve and medial nerve, we have discussed earlier. 
but this muscle is supplied by anterior bone. I think this is uh, better uh, to uh, um, identify all structures beginning from scapular region, vertical scapular region, then back of the arm, back of the elbow, back of the forearm, and dorsum of the hand. If you, everybody follow this identification, most of the muscles are very important for identification and their groups and some nerves in this arm, this is the main nerve, the radial nerve, that will come from posterior cord that will supply whole groups. This is back of the arm and back of the forearm, either directly or through deep muscular branch, posterior interosseous. So, uh, I am just uh, again, I am just saying this is a demonstration of the back of the superior extremity beginning from scapular region up to the dorsum of the hand, sequentially from above downwards, vertebral scapular region, then back of the arm, back of the elbow, back of the forearm, back and dorsum of the hand. And we have already demonstrated, and I try to identify the major structures, muscle muscles, nerves and arteries of these areas of these regions for your tactile purpose. I wish this demonstration will be very much effective for your tactical knowledge. Everybody try to follow and try to identify and try to that memorize and try to understand from this demonstration and that will be helpful for subsequent and process about anatomy of the human body, especially in the Thank you.